Good morning, Macedonia. And to my YouTube viewers and Facebook viewers, uh, we say again good morning to you on this blessed uh, fourth Sunday in April in the year of our Lord, 2020. We are so thankful that God has given us an opportunity once again to stand and declare the joy that's in his word and to give you words of peace to sustain you uh, in times such as these. And so we're so grateful to our God who is our creator, who gave us life to Jesus the Christ, who is our redeemer, who redeemed our life from the evil one. And we certainly thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit um, that lives within us. And so we're grateful to the Godhead on today for allowing us this opportunity to stand before you and to declare the good news. We pray that you and your families are yet still practicing social distancing. And even as we go through these phases of reopening the city, uh, I do want to ask that you continue to practice social distancing uh, because uh, this pandemic uh, is not over. And so we want to do our very best uh, to practice safety even as the city prepares to uh, phase us into opening uh, the city. I uh, want to say to our church family, be prayerful uh, that we make the right decisions going forward. Uh, there will be some information that will come to you in uh, the coming weeks as to when we shall uh, reconvene and begin our fellowship. Uh, but I do want you to know that Pastor Curry is is not going to be in a rush uh, to get us back. Uh, I want to be considerate uh, of our elders. I want to be considerate of our children. I want to be considerate of all of our members when it comes to us reconvening in fellowship. And so be prayerful that um, the right decisions are being made. We're in prayer to God um, that God would reveal to us uh, what's going to be best for us. And so I ask that you would pray. Uh, for the church, pray for the city, pray for this nation, uh, pray for our leaders uh, as they uh, began to, again, open uh, this country uh, back up, that they would do things that would be decent and, and in order. Uh, we're so grateful for, again, this Sunday morning that we can share a word, uh, again, to encourage your hearts. Uh, our prayer is that something will be said or done this day that would further your walk with Christ, for truly it is about our walk with him. A closer walk with the master uh, is a better life for the believer. And so I ask that you would continue to look to Christ in all things. Uh, I want to share a word uh, today coming from uh, the book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 27. Uh, and I want to just read one verse, but I want to... Um, look at or deal with um, in this message, I want to summarize and paraphrase uh, verses 13 through verses 44. But there's one particular verse I want to key on or I want to emphasize uh, that the Apostle Paul makes uh, in uh, his letter uh, and in um, this particular book, um, the book of Acts. Uh, in the 27th chapter, the 31st verse, the Apostle Paul uh, writes these words. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. And again, the Apostle Paul says in 27, uh, Acts 27, verse 31, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. I want to use for thought as the Spirit would allow us just briefly for a few moments. Uh, if I can gather your attention, uh, I want to use for a thought today. Hang on in there. I want to use for a thought today. Hang on in there. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this privilege we have to stand before uh, your people virtually and declare your goodness. 
pray now, God, that you would allow us to decrease, that your spirit may increase, that you may speak through us, speak to us, and speak for us. Lord, I ask right now, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, I pray, O oh God, that it would be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Hide us now behind yonder's cross where your people will see more of you and a whole lot less of us. O oh God, that your word may go forth with power and that we may be hearers and doers of your holy word. We surrender to your will now. It's in your hands, and we declare victory and joy in the name of Jesus. We ask it all and give thanks today. Amen. Life is full of challenges. Life is full of journeys uh, that we must take. Uh, God purposed it uh, that it may build us into being the person uh, that he would have us to be. Uh, God has to send us through uh, certain trials of our lives and certain joys of our lives to mature us into the creature he would have us to be that would bring him glory. I can recall my brothers and sisters as I look at my own life. Uh, looking back, I can see where God has been uh, always uh, begun a process of building me up uh, to be where he would have me to be and to do what he would have me to do. Believe it or not, uh, I believed at an early age that the Lord would one day call me to preach. Uh, this was not something that I wanted to do, but I had seen it in so many phases of my life. Uh, not only that, but I had dreamed of preaching uh, at a young age. I, I saw myself uh, preaching and I saw myself leading. But uh, beyond all of that, uh, as I look back over my life, I also see where God had uh, purposely prepared me for a time such as this. Uh, I can remember uh, serving as a young lad in my home church uh, there at my beloved uh, Antioch Jones Missionary Baptist Church there on Highway 79 between Bells and Brownsville, Tennessee. I can remember as a young lad the Lord allowing me to see so many phases of his church and allowing me to operate in so many phases of his church, not realizing that God was allowing me not only to be introduced to certain auxiliaries and ministries in the church, but to also prepare me to understand how they functioned in the body of Christ. I can remember as a young age before I could even stand uh, uh, good, before I was uh, even tall in stature, and I'm not very tall now, but before uh, I even matured into a young man as a child, I can remember singing uh, in our youth choir, and I can remember serving uh, on our youth usher ministry. I can remember graduating as I got older to uh, have the opportunity to serve on the senior usher ministry and sing in the senior choir. Uh, I can remember not only that, but I can remember when I became of age that they begun to uh, allow me to understand the administration of the church. And so when I became of age, uh, I was appointed a treasurer and trustee uh, in our church. And I served for a length of time, understanding uh, the needs of the physical church, but also understanding the finances of, of the church. It was from there uh, that the Lord uh, placed it in the spirit of my leader, my pastor, and was asked to serve as a deacon, and so I, I became a deacon at a young age, and so I began to learn uh, the spiritual side of being responsible of nurturing and teaching uh, on the spiritual side of the church, and so I served as a deacon, and when the time was right and I had learned what I needed to know, uh, I became the chairperson of the deacon ministry, and from that uh, the Lord saw fit uh, 
uh, that through that time and through my periods of learning, I learned what it meant to be an usher. I learned what it meant to be a faithful choir member. I learned what it meant to be a trustee. I learned what it meant to be a treasurer. I learned what it meant to serve as a deacon. I learned what it meant to serve as the leader of a deacon ministry. I learned along the way, not knowing that every phase of my life within the body of Christ was preparation for me to lead in the future. Now, now, let me share with you, my brothers and sisters, again, I knew at an early age that the Lord was ultimately going to call me to serve as a minister for him, but this was not something that Curry really wanted to do. But when the time was right and when God was ready, he called certain things to happen to draw me closer to him because it was time for me to begin to walk further in my destiny. And I come to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, each and every one of us uh, have a purpose in life. Each and every one of us uh, who accept Christ as our Savior and began to live a life for Christ. I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, that each and every one of us have a purpose in life. And God knows exactly what that purpose is. And we're destined to achieve what God has for us because it's a part of God's divine plan for our lives and for this world. I like looking at this particular text because we're looking at an individual by the name of Paul. Paul is, is a lot like me uh, and many others can also be a witness and can testify uh, to being the same way. Paul wasn't always a follower of Christ. In fact, he was actually an enemy of Christ. He was a hired assassin for the Sanhedrin. He was he was a killer. He, he actually persecuted the church. He was a leader in that capacity. And being knowledgeable of the law, being knowledgeable of leadership, it was this Paul who, when God was ready for him to serve for him, uh, allowed this man to have a spiritual encounter uh, with him while he was yet on his way to Damascus to persecute the church. This man who, who was eyewitness to the, res to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This, this, this same man who was a persecutor uh, at the time now has an encounter with the master. And I want to share with each and every one of you today, my brothers and sisters who are going through this life, who may have your trials, who may have your tribulations, who may have your struggles, who may be in the mid, in the crossroads of your life, not knowing which way to go. I come to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, the best recipe to continue on in this life is to understand that when God gets ready for you, he always makes provision to have that encounter with you. On his way to Damascus, uh, he struck down off of his horse, blinded where he cannot see, but he hears the voice of the master. And upon hearing the voice of the master, he is commanded to go into Damascus, meet a man by the name of Ananias. And when he gets there, Ananias is to lay his hands on this Paul and Upon getting into Damascus, he does just as Christ has commanded. And three days later, he is anointed by Ananias, who is leery of doing this because he knows Paul for what he used to be. And many of us my day, today, my brothers and sisters, are judged by what we used to be. But can I share with you today what you used to be really is the indicative of what God would have you to be because wherever you come from was only stepping songs to where God would have you to be. Listen, all of us have experienced 
good and bad days. All of us have experienced some bad times in our lives. But can I share with you today, my brothers and sisters, we should not be judged by our past when we're on our way to our destiny. And somebody here today may be on the verge of giving up. You may be on the verge of throwing in the towel. But I want to share with you today, if you're in the midst of your troubles and your trials, this is not the time to throw in the towel. This is not the time to hang it up, but this is the time to hold on to God's unchanging hand. This is the time to hang on in there. This Paul was destined, my brothers and sisters, to declare the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he had some good days and some bad days. He had some times where... Uh, he was no longer the persecutor, but now he finds himself being persecuted because of his stand for Christ. And I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, there are going to be some times where you're going to be persecuted for standing up for what is right. But can I share with you today, my brothers and sisters, what my grandmama used to tell me a long time ago. She says, Reggie, as long as you do right. She says, right will follow you. And I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, uh, learn to always do right, and, and right will follow you. The Bible says it's like this, you reap what you sow. And if you sow good seed, you shall reap a good harvest. We should understand, my brothers and sisters, giving up should never be the option when we're working for the law. Paul now, after having his struggles in his ministry, again, being persecuted, being almost stoned to death, being thrown off a cliff, left to die. Uh, this same Paul, uh, who um, at one time was, again, a persecutor, is now being persecuted. This, this Paul has seen God work in many ways. God has allowed him to be the vessel uh, that would open blinded eyes. Uh, Paul, uh, he was... The one who had the opportunity to cast out evil spirits. But now he's further challenged because God has a purpose and a plan for Paul's life. For Paul is to go to Rome and declare the gospel to the, to the, to the Greeks and to the Romans. And you have to understand, my brothers and sisters, when God has purpose for your life, it doesn't mean that we always fall right into our purpose. Sometimes there are some stepping stones along the way. Can I share with you today, my brothers and sisters, I've had many stepping stones along this way. And even before God called me into ministry, I'd done some things that God wasn't pleased with. But that was God's purpose for my life, for he wanted me to understand and know that I'm not perfect. And I'm going to fall along the way, but if I hold on to his hand, I know that he's able to pick me up. And each and every one of us need to understand when God has purpose for your life, when you're tied to divine destiny, nothing will stop God's divine destiny for your life. Paul was purposed to go to Rome, but, but in the process of fulfilling that purpose, there were some things Paul had to endure that that purpose might be fulfilled. And I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, to the young minister who's yet still waiting on the call to serve in a greater capacity and you're almost wanting to give up because it seemed like God's people won't hear. It seemed like God's people won't respond. I want to share with you today, this is only a stepping stone to what God has for your life. Hang on in there. Even though they may reject you now, they'll accept you when the time is right. You just need to learn how to hang on in there. It's something about hanging on in there that makes the difference in our lives. I want to encourage you today, my brothers and sisters, hang on in there because watch what happens in chapter 27 before Paul gets to Rome. There's an incident that happens in 27 that could have taken them out, but it also could have stopped the process of God leading Paul into his destiny. And can I share with you today, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand life is not perfect, but we can rejoice in the fact that we serve a perfect God. In 27, as they are on their way to Rome, 
Paul realizes that it's not a good time to sail because he recognizes that a storm appears to be on the way. He recommends to the centurions and to the leaders, that now is not a good time to sail, but Paul being a smaller man among these men, uh, his voice was not heard, and yet they sailed out and sailed close by a place called Crete. And in verse 14, the Bible says that while they were yet sailing, that a great storm appears, insomuch that this storm was not like any other storm. This storm was great and massive. It was termed as a Euro Clydon. It was, it was not just a little wind and a little rain. Th this was a massive storm. This, this was a storm that should have and could have taken them out. But yet they sailed on. While they're sailing, they're in the midst of a death-defying fine storm. And can I share with you today, my brothers and my sisters, we need to understand that all of our lives are going to be challenged by the wind and the waves of life. Sometime a little rain is going to fall. But can I share with you today, my brothers and sisters, that's a good time to hang on in there because after the rain has fallen and after the wind has ceased and after the waves have come, oh, there's always a quiet time after a storm and there's always a parting of the clouds and there's always a revealing of the sun to let us know that storms may come but storms don't last. They're only temporary. You need to know that as we face our storms and challenges in our lives, they're only temporary. They're only making us into what God would have us to be. And when you're destined according to God's divine plan, you need to understand that your destiny is not reflective of your right now. Your right now may not be perfect. Your right now may be a little messy. And most people don't want to deal with messiness. But can I share with you today, my brothers and sisters, the God we serve specializes in cleaning up messy folk. And we need to understand that there needs to be a little mess in our life because had it not been for a little mess in our lives, we wouldn't appreciate the God whom we serve that's able to deliver us from some messy situations. And all of us have been in some messy situations. We've been in some things that was not pleasing to God, not pleasing to us, not pleasing to our family. But you ought to rejoice in the fact that when God got ready to deliver us, it was only him who could bring us out of our messy situation. So we should always thank God that even though we may have to deal with some mess, we've got a God that's able to clean up any messy situation. And what you're dealing with right now may not look too good right now. It may not be real pleasing right now. It may be uncomfortable right now. But I want to share with you, your right now does not define your destiny. It's not the end. We're going to have some bad time. But while we're going through our struggles, can I suggest to you to hang on in there? And it's good to have somebody to encourage you along the way. It was a good thing that Paul was aboard this ship because had it not been for the faith that Paul had in God, many would have perished. But, but because he had undying faith because his hope was built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Many lives were saved just because Paul believed that God would make a way somehow. And I need somebody in your homes today to just lift up your hands and declare before your family and those whom you may be around 
And in the future days, let somebody else know, listen, if nobody else will lift up the name of Jesus, I will always give him praise at all times. I should always boast on him because had it not been for him, I wouldn't be where I am today. And we need to always be willing to encourage somebody else. And if nobody else will praise him, I'll praise him because he's been good to me. I want to say anybody out there today that can be a witness that God's been good to you. Paul, here being in the midst of this storm, while people are panicking, while people are frustrated, while many are ready to die, Paul receives information dispatched by God to an angel. That angel declares unto Paul to let them know that even though the storm might be raging, and even though it may seem like death is on its way, no lives shall be lost because Paul is under divine assignment. He has to get to Rome, so no matter what happens in the process and during the course of this sailing to Rome, no matter how bad it may look, no matter how rough it may get, Paul has to get to Rome because the word of God needs to be declared in Rome. And ultimately, he must die in Rome. So even though it may look like death on the sea, uh, his destiny is not in the sea, but his destiny is to make it to Rome. And if trouble may come in the process, let it come because this is not the end of my story. I'm going somewhere. I need somebody to declare in this place. I may be struggling right now. I may not have a job right now. I may be sick right now. There may be trouble right now. But this is not the end of my life. God has a plan for my life. And I'm moving on beyond this. I need somebody to declare today. It may be rough right now. But I'm I'm moving on beyond this. So Paul gets this revelation from an angel. In verses 21 through 30. And then when we get to verse 31. While they're panicking. Paul lets them know. That everything is going to be. All right. He says I got. I got confirmation. On last night, I got a hit on my Twitter and my Instagram. I got an email that told me that no lives shall be lost, even though this storm is yet raging. Paul declares to the centurion, there is one requirement. For those who are under the sound of my voice, there's only one thing y'all need to do. I know it don't look good. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's unpleasant. But I've received instruction to declare unto you that if you stay in this ship, your life will be saved. So he wanted them to know that jumping off the ship was not an option. Taking their own life was not an option the real option to be saved was to abide in the ship. My brothers and my sisters, that's what I want to declare to you today. I know your right now may not look good, but your right now is just an inkling of what is to come. And If it had not been for your right now, there would be no destiny, but you have to realize your right now is leading you to your, to your destiny. I had some folk, I never will forget it, but I, I had some folk when I, when I began to um, move up or, or be in positions within the body of Christ, I do remember that there were some within my own church family because I was young, because um, they, they thought they knew me. Uh, there were some words that were said about me that could have caused me to retaliate. It could have caused me to give up. It could have caused me to walk off. It could have caused me to leave the church. But I, I, I hung on in there. But many had said, 
this boy will never make it. This boy here ain't going to be nothing but trouble. Uh, this boy here is not deacon material. Little did they know that God had even greater responsibility for me. And can I share with you today, all those who had something to say that was negative about me, they're all gone now. And I'm still here, still declaring God's word because they didn't realize that my right now was not indicative of my not yet. And what God had in store for me, they hadn't seen yet. And I want to share with you today, those of you who are listening, what God has in store for you, you, you haven't even seen yet but I want to share with you today you need to hang on in there because God's about to do something great in your life you need to understand the importance of hanging on in there in the midst of your of your troubles 31 again he gave the declaration but after giving the declaration he also began to give out the plan you need to understand if God has a purpose for your life he ultimately must have a plan and if my destiny is, is not indicative of my right now but my right now is only an inkling of what God is about to do I need to know that whatever God has to do to get me where he wants me to be he's going to do it and he's going to do it in his own time and so we need to understand that you know our purpose uh, has to have a process by which God can prepare us for our not yet I'm going to say that one again. God has a purpose, and that purpose has to go through a process that would prepare us to receive what he has for us or our not yet. And so whatever we're going through is only preparation for greater. Even though it's rough now, it's going to get better after a while. And everything that is God has allowed to be processed in your life is God's way of strengthening you and building you and maturing you that when the time may come for you to receive what God has for you, you'll be ready to go in battle. Look at what happens if you'll keep reading in verses 33 to verse 38. Paul gives them the plan because the storm is raging. Many are on the ship. There's a lot of cargo on the ship. There's, there's food, food for X amount of days there. There are other things that they may need while on the journey. And so the ship is loaded with food. The ship is loaded with materials, but the ship is also loaded with people. And so uh, God gives, by way of his spirit, Paul a divine plan. He says, tell them to go ahead and prepare a meal. Tell them to go ahead and eat. and Eat as much as they possibly could and after they had eaten, Paul says, take what's left and throw it off the ship because we won't need any excess baggage in the midst of this, this storm. If we carry too much in the midst of this storm, we're going to mess around and drown. What I need you to do is to prepare yourself to be without for a few days. So eat what you can eat all your stomach can hold and after you have eaten everything what i want you all to do is take what food that is left and cast it overboard when i share with you today my brothers and sisters god works like that when he's moving us forward in our lives and preparing us to go into our our not yet he has a purpose and a plan, and that plan is that once you have been fed, once you, are, once you have received all the nurturing that you need, in order to go forward, there are some things that you got to leave behind. I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, some of those things that we have to leave behind sometimes include people. because There are some people that will hold you back because they don't want to see you get any further. And sometimes you got to learn that when you reach a certain level in your life, there are some folk that's not going where you're going, and they can hold you back. And so sometimes you need to learn how to let some folk go because those folks ain't going where you're going. And you have to cut ties with them because if you don't cut ties with them, you'll find yourself being held back from where God is trying to take you to. Can I share with you today, everybody that says they're for you are not always with you. Everybody that says they're with you is not always going where you're going. There comes a point in time where you got to let some stuff go. 
not only, not only people, but there's some things in our heart and in our mind that we've been carrying with us for years. And it's been a burden. And if we're going to go where God would have us to go, we've got to learn how to let some of those things that are in our hearts and in our mind that we've been carrying for years, we got to learn how to clear up our mind. Throw that stuff overboard because you going somewhere and you can't go where God would have you to go with all that stuff on your mind and in your heart. Learn how to let some of that stuff go. They began to unload the ship because that's part of God's plan. Your destiny will also require you to understand, number one, that the way it looks right now is not indicative of how it's going to be down the road. It's going to get better down the road. But number two, while you're going through, know that God has purposed this and has allowed a plan to be executed in your life. And as God is working his plan, you need to understand of following the instructions that God is laying out. Whatever that plan is, if it means letting some stuff go, if it means throwing some stuff overboard, Paul knew the importance of lightening the load because he knew the storm was going to get even greater. And he understood the fact that if we prepared beforehand, we would be able to weather the storm. You need to understand the importance of preparation while we're going through, but we need to understand the importance of preparation that we may be prepared for what God is about to do in our lives. Preparation is important, and preparation ain't always pretty. A lot of us like to go from one degree to the next and not have any trouble. A lot of us like to go from one degree to the next and not have any struggles. A lot of us want to be elevated, but don't want to go through what you need to go through to get to that elevation. A lot of us want to take the easy road. Can I share with you the easy road? It's not always the best road. Can I tell you the road that has a few hills and a few valleys, and a few curves along the way is the best road to take? Somebody may not understand why I would say that, but understand this. When there's hills, we know that we can look to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing all of our help come from the Lord. So there's nothing wrong with having some hills to climb because we can look to Jesus as we're climbing the hill and know that our help come from him. Not only that, but we may have some moments when we're down in the valley. But we can be reminded that the psalmist said that even though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil for God will be with us. So it's all right to have some moments where we're climbing the hill and all right to have some moments where we may be in the valley wherever we are we need to understand it's all right because we've got somebody walking along with us you ought to give him glory right now and you ought to give him some praise because you're not in this alone but you got somebody that's walking right by your side come on and give him some praise right where you are in your home can you just lift your hand and tell him thank you for always being there in the midst of my struggles while I'm in the valley while I'm climbing the mountaintop and when I get to the mountaintop I know you'll be right there because you've been with me all the time and so between verses 33 and 38, they, they lighten the load. They give up some stuff. And that's another thing that we need to understand. When God has a plan for our life, sometimes it requires us to give up some stuff that we, that we cherish, that we cherish the most. What, what are you holding on to? That's keeping you from moving forward. What is that thing that you need to let go? What is that thing that you need to separate from to allow you to get to where God would have you to be? You need to understand that there will come a time where you've got to learn how to let some things go. Because again, your purpose has to have a process that prepares you. They were preparing for the storm to get worse, but they were preparing also for shipwreck. So we know that our right now is not the defining moment to our destiny, but it's just a part of God's plan for maturing us 
as we move closer to our destiny. Then number two, that purpose for our lives has a process by which God prepares us, and he has the plan. We need to allow him to work the plan in our lives. But lastly, you know, we need to understand the importance of giving yourself totally to God. You've heard this expression said many times in your life. If you've been in this Christian walk for some time, there are some times in our lives we've got to learn how to let go and let God. So according to this plan, Paul gives the last, okay, we've eaten. Okay, we're, we're full. We've gotten strength from eating and nourishing our physical bodies. Now we've thrown what we didn't need off the ship, so now the ship is lighter. Now we're ready. Now we're, we're armed. We're, we're prepared for whatever may come before us, but we've got to learn to give it, give it to God. And so the text says in verses 39, through, 41, through 44, when you began to read, Bible says that, that they pulled up the anchor. They pulled, uh, they turned the rudder and released it from its direction. They, they took the sails and, and brought them in and tied them up. And they committed themselves to the sea in that whatever the sea wanted to do wherever the sea wanted to take them. They, they were willing to allow the sea to take them wherever, wherever the sea wanted to take them. My brothers and my sisters, we've got to get to that point in our lives as well. When we are part of God's divine destiny, there comes a point time in our lives when we've got to learn how to take our hands off of it and let God have it. They, they turn Everything loose. They, they pulled up the anchor. They had tightened up the sail so it no longer guided them. They had took the rudders so it no longer could direct them from the bottom. And they just gave way to the sea and said, See, have your way. Wherever you want to take me, take me. Wherever you want to lead me, lead me. I'm going somewhere. Somebody need to know that when we totally give our lives to God, what we're really saying is, God, I know that I'm a part of your divine destiny. I know you have a purpose for my life. I know that you're working it out through my trials and my tribulations, through my good days and my bad. I know you're only working it out, and I do know that all things work together for the good of them who love you, and I love you. I know you're working a work, and now I need to get back and let you do what you do best. Lead me. Guide me. Take me where you need me to be, and I'll no longer try to handle it, but I'll let you handle it. I'll let go and let you have your way in my life. Bible says that they let go and commit themselves to the sea. But upon committing themselves to the sea, the Bible says that they make way towards a sandbar in the midst of the sea. And the Bible says that as they hit this sandbar, there's a, also a stone in the midst of the ocean and the ship is now wrecked. Bible says that the ship is no longer complete, but now there's holes in the ship. Now there's pieces of the ship scattered all about in the sea. Not only are parts of the ship scattered about, but now there are people scattered about all out in the sea. But remember, Paul told them that as long as they stay in the ship, all lives will be saved. But here now the ship has been wrecked. And now many are no longer in the ship. But are now spread out within the sea. But can I share with you today my brothers and sisters. While you're trying to figure out. What God's next move is. Can I share with you that God already has it worked out if you only trust and believed. No one figured that the ship would wreck, nor did they figure that they would be cast out into the sea. But what I like about God is whatever happens 
in our lives. He always has a way out for his children. Here they are in the midst of the sea. And now the centurions are now nervous because they have a responsibility of bringing all that left on the sea, that left from Crete. They have a responsibility to bring all of them to Rome. And if any life be lost, they understood that their lives would be lost too. And one of the centurions was beginning, had in mind, said to take his own life, but the apostle Paul encourages him not to take his own life, but to trust God, even though the situation may look grim. And so then they began to give the command to those that could swim, if you would, those that could swim, if you would just swim on the shore. But those that couldn't swim, the command was for them to look out among the sea. Because when the shipwreck God provided some things for those who could not swim, there were some pieces of the ship that was yet strolled out over the sea. And so the request was that if you could not swim, if you could not float, if you would just grab a hold of a piece of the ship and hold on to the piece of the ship, that the piece of the ship would help you get in to dry land. I thank God today that he always has a plan for his children, even though we may not know what he's going to do. Even though we may not know how he's going to do it, one thing we can be assured of is that the Lord always makes a way out of no way. Do I have a witness out there today that can be a witness that God has always made a way out of no way? So the Bible said those who could swim swam on in the shore. But there were some that came in on nothing but broken pieces of the ship. I bid you farewell today and may the Lord bless you real good. But I want to share with you today that you're destined to make it to where God would have you to be. And whatever God has to do to get you where he needs you to be, he's always making a way for his children to get where he would have them to be. Can I suggest to you today to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and allow him to direct your path because the Lord will, uh, I said the Lord sure will, uh, he'll make a way somehow, uh, ain't the Lord all right, I'm glad that I'm a part of divine destiny, uh, and whatever God has to do to get me where he has me to, where he wants me to be, I'm going to trust in him for all things. And even though I go through the storm and the rain, I realize that I can't give up on God because the Lord didn't give up on me. In fact, over 2,020 years ago, he had me on his mind and he went to a place called Calvary and he died for you and for me. I'm glad that Jesus never forgot about me but had me on his mind now, when he allowed them to put nails in his hand now, he had me on his mind now, when he allowed them to spear him in the side now, he had me on his mind now, and when he died uh, on an old rugged cross uh, he had me on his mind now, but I'm glad that wasn't the end of the story because not only did he have me on his mind uh, but he he also had a plan for you and for me. Uh, and when they took him down and laid him in a barry tomb, uh, they didn't realize, but they were helping him execute his plan. Uh, and while he laid in the grave, uh, the Bible said that his spirit uh, released those who had been captain, uh, who had been placed in a place called Sheol. Uh, he had set the captives free. Uh, and right early uh, the third day morning, uh, he got up uh, because it was all a part uh, of his divine plan uh, and his purpose for our lives. Uh, I come to share with you today sometime uh, you might be 
nailed to the cross. Uh, sometime uh, they may bury you, uh, but can I share some good news with you today uh, that one of these days uh, you're going to come up uh, and you're going to come out uh, because one Sunday morning uh, Jesus got up uh, and he came out uh, and declared all power is in my hand. Uh, I want to share the good news with you today. You might be going through uh, the storm and the rain. Uh, you might be dealing uh, with a situation that's caused you to be shipwrecked. Uh, but can I share with you today, if you can't swim, uh, hold on to a few broken pieces uh, because you're going to make it after a while. Uh, and when you get to shore, uh, you can look back over your life uh, and thank God uh, for bringing you all the way because right early Sunday morning, uh, he declared all oh, power is in my hand and I want to share with you today that same power that raised him on the third day is the same power that's keeping you alive today hang on in there don't throw in the towel but trust in the Lord and let him have his way after a while by and by it'll all be over with and we can hear him say well done thou good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few things come on up I'll make you ruler over many can I just suggest to you today to hang on in there it's gonna get better after a while to the YouTube viewer to the Facebook viewer who may be listening today and may not have a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to share with you that today is a good day to give your life to him. Listen, it's simple and easy. It's just surrendering in your heart and in your mind your ways and your thoughts and opening yourself to the ways of God. If you're not saved. Just confess it. Listen, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. If you can do that today, just call on God and say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I believe that you're able to save me. Therefore, I give my life to you that you may save me. I give my life to you because I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you shed your blood that I may be forgiven of my sins. I believe that you are Savior and Lord. I believe that not only that you died, but I believe that you were raised from the dead on the third day and I believe that you still live. Therefore, I welcome you to live in me. If you can say that today, you can receive salvation. Preacher can't save you. Mama can't save you. Daddy can't save you. Their testimony can lead you to Christ. But you've got to give yourself to Christ. If you can do that today, you can receive salvation on today. To the saint, I want to encourage you to hang on in there. Continue to walk this walk of faith. Trust God. Even in turbulent times, hang on in there. When it seems like your destiny is failing, trust God to know that he's doing exactly what needs to be done to carry you where you need to be. Maybe I'm talking to someone today who's backslidden, who once walked in the ways of God but have gone into another path. I want to share with you today that today is a good day to give your life to him. Give it back. It's never, he's never left you, but you and your heart and mind have left him. I want to share with you today to repent and say, Lord, I, I, I believe you. I gave my heart to you years ago, but, but I've, I've fallen away, and I need to be back on the right track. If you can just say that today, the Lord can restore you. And as he told the lady, who had been caught in 
the act of adultery. He says, go and sin no more. So to the backslider, uh, it's just a redirection, getting back on the right path and beginning to walk into the ways of God. Again, we hope something was said or done today that would further your walk with Christ. But truly, it is about our walk with him. Know that we're destined for greatness, um, but our destiny, uh, our beginning to our destiny uh, is going to have some, some rough places. But God's able to smooth those rough places out. But it was those rough places that built your character, uh, built your strength and your integrity. Uh, don't give up in the midst of it. Hang on in there. God has a plan. Let him work his plan. Learn how to let go and let him have his way in your life. May God bless you. May heaven smile on you. May he continue to keep you on the umbrella of his grace until we meet again. May the grace of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest with us, may it rule over us, may it abide in us till we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.